This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. About a month ago, Dr. James Lindsay and I came together in Phoenix, Arizona for a conference that we had put together. We named the conference The Theology of Marxism. Pastor John Benzinger and Kyle Swanson were kind enough to help us host, and John Benzinger joined us for a panel discussion on the issues of the conference. Now, I hope that, over the past six years, I've been able to help you and those around you understand what was going on, what would be coming and what you could do about it. But I will admit that along the way, I've had some deep regrets. My greatest regret is that after begging CEOs and corporations to join me in the fight against the coming tsunami of communo-fascism, and after begging the conservative politicians to join me in the fight against the soon-coming cultural revolution in the United States, and by the way, I include members of the Trump administration on that list, And after begging conservative Reformed evangelical pastors and ministry leaders to join me to fight against the neo-Marxist attempt to take over the church before 2017, which, by the way, none of them joined me at that time, that I trusted that after they finally heard the alarm bells in 2018 that we had to act, that they would sweep out the Marxists from the church that they would understand that this was the greatest betrayal by professing Christians in church history that this was the Judas Revolution, and that it had to be completely and totally eradicated. All the Judases needed to go. So, as I had been doing for 15 years with my business, I turned over my microphone to many of them. I spent the money to put on the initial conferences for at least two years, and to bring them, to pay for everything, to make sure that these things happened. And I trusted that they would do what was necessary to storm the castle, defenestrate the heretics, and do whatever was biblically necessary to save the bride of Christ. Well, I was, with very, very few exceptions, completely wrong. And after a period of time, most were having their own conferences, talking about CRT but doing nothing to remove those from within their own camps that were teaching CRT in the past. You know, those men who had brought this demonic Marxism into the Christian church. You see, those men remained. And everyone was silent. And as a matter of fact, some of the men who are chiefly responsible for bringing Marxism into the Reformed Christian faith, men like Legan Duncan are now once again being brought into conferences to preach to those whom they should be protected from. These men who are already proven, unrepentant wolves, who sought to run a cultural revolution in Christianity. It is truly sickening to watch. And so, it is time to start talking. It's time for me to start talking. And we will start talking with men that I trust will tell the truth, no matter what the cost may be. And so I do appreciate Pastor John Benzinger and Pastor Kyle Swanson, because these two men will not be trying to provide cover for men who had so little regard for the gospel and for God's people that they decided to participate in mind rape of the Bride of Christ. And believe me, that is truly what this was. And it continues to be, as the gaslighting has been fully turned up. So, when Dr. James Lindsay and I begin to put together the pieces to tell the story of the what, where, how, and the who, that led to the largest cult startup in human history, we needed to do it ourselves. And we needed to say what was necessary, what was true without any regard to what it may cost us. Now, from Dr. Lindsay's side of things, 
the cost is offending the very smart people. Now, who are the very smart people? Well, French author Jacques Ellul stated, Those who read the press of their group and listen to the radio of their group are constantly reinforced in their allegiance. They learn more and more that their group is right, that its actions are justified. Thus their beliefs are strengthened. At the same time, such propaganda contains elements of criticism and refutation of other groups, which will never be read or heard by a member of another group. Thus we see before our eyes how a world of closed minds establishes itself, a world in which everybody talks to himself. Everybody constantly views his own certainty about himself and the wrongs done by him or the others, a world in which nobody listens to anybody else. End quote. In other words, the stupid smart people are guided by many of the same forces that those in confessional communities are constrained by. They refuse to admit that something is really, truly abnormal for the sake of being shunned as an extremist by their respectable peers, the people that they care about. You see, They don't care about what the rest of the world says. They only care about what those in the community are saying. But what if there is a glitch? What if there is some sort of misguided attempt to deceive those within the community and plant that seed of a fallacy? Well, you can have a real problem. And those respectable peers, the Ivy League types, just can't imagine for a moment that an actual communist revolution is taking place around them as they speak and write. You see, the stupid smart people are so stupid, so gullible, because they want to be misled. There's no way to make them not want it. See, you have to work with the human race as it exists, with all of its flaws, but getting them to see reason is a fool's errand. And if they were to wake up they must wake up all together at an agreed time publicly because they can't admit that they were wrong. And then they must repeat the same things that, let's say, James Lindsay and I said about four years ago. But now they will say those same things while giving no accreditation or nods to those that they called conspiracy theorists or crazy in years past. The stupid smart people with all of their Ivy League degrees, with all of their prestigious fellowships. They either completely missed what was going on, or they just completely missed it due to their sheer arrogance and stupidity. Or they were completely misled. Or even worse, they actually knew what was going to happen. And did nothing out of fear. And both the weak anti-woke evangelicals and the stupid smart people will go on doing the same thing. They will now begin to talk about CRT and maybe complain a little bit about the World Economic Forum. And they will write books. But they will essentially do nothing to root out those in their own affinity groups who are responsible for what could be the end of humanity the end of our nation. Because even though they should have been fully awakened to the threat of what was happening to all of us in 2020 and 2021 and 2022, they are not preparing for the challenges that we will be encountering over the next several years. The global cabal of governments, corporations, education, and faith are all aiming for 2030 and then 2050 and are fully committed to seeing this global and viral communist fascist revolution to reach its operational success. And if they were to back down, they would lose everything. And so in thinking through how we could approach this workshop, James Lindsay and I wanted to make sure that we made something very clear. And this is what it is. That Marxism is a religion. Now, most people think of Marxism as an economic theory or maybe a social theory. This isn't a proper understanding. Marxism, as strange as it may sound, is a theology. 
the basis for a religion. This isn't to say that Marxism or communism is like a religion. It is to say that it literally is a religion. The basis of the Marxian theology is work, or, as they tend to have it, the work. You must do the work. It is a works-based religion. The work is the basis of the Marxian theology in the same way that submission is the basis of Islam. And atonement by grace through the active and passive obedience in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is the basis of Christianity. So, in this groundbreaking conference, James Lindsay and I have decided to dive into the Marxian literature, including the writings of Karl Marx himself, to show that Marxism should be thought of as a theology by clarifying how this theology works. But we can't stop short at Karl Marx. We have to examine how this religion and all of its adherent cults have manifested themselves in imposing their dominion over the earth. Understanding the theological nature of Marxism will, in turn, shed considerable light on the theological nature of wokeness. It's a religion. If you read Marx's writings before the Communist Manifesto, it's clear that Marx wasn't outlining a political and social theory. He was outlining a theology. He had a theory of mankind and human nature. He had what you would call a soteriology in religious circles which is a theory of salvation. He said we're going to do the work. We're going to become socialist man. And then we'll achieve the Garden of Eden. We'll have the kingdom of God brought back here to earth as a theory of salvation, built in a soteriology. It's an eschatological religion. In other words, it has an end times. The revolution takes the place of the rapture. The socialism that follows the revolution isn't going to see everything worked out. That's a tribulation. But in the end, the kingdom of God will be reestablished on earth when we have communism. So it's an eschatological faith, as well as a theodicy, an explanation for evil. So for Marx, history had a teleology, a purpose a trajectory, and an endpoint, which is, we're all going to become socialists. But you end up with a kind of a hive mind, as we've talked about in the past on my podcast many years ago on the global brain. And this collectivism then becomes totalitarianism. Complete, total totalitarianism. So at the end of the Marxian religious history, Social relations become stateless and classless. They cease to be rooted in domination and oppression. And we enter into the garden. And you have to start thinking about those things that are taking place with technology and the Internet of Things, the global brain. With the thoughts of Neuralink and brain implants, how this all works together. This is a faith Every piece of a religious faith is present, even imputation. Many of the cultic interpretations of the religion of Marxism, the cultural Marxism of Gramsci, the identity Marxism of Lukács, and the ecclesial development of that identity-based Marxism in Paolo Ferreri, the identity Gramscian and totalitarianism through the revolution as envisioned by Marcusa, and his puritanical repressive tolerance. The manifestation of this systematic theology is seen through Bell and Crenshaw, and then its popularism through the evangelists of race Marxism today, through D'Angelo, through Kendi, and through the reformed evangelical community who embraced the many forms of this Marxism as their new systematic theology men who were supposed to be trusted for truth can now only be trusted for treachery. As they position themselves to be the high priests and priestesses of the new world religion, Marx's envisionment of heaven on earth, subjugating entire ethnicities, 
preying upon the hatred and jealousy of mankind, and fostering and propagating resentment in the name of Marx, Mao, and Marcusa. The unholy trinity of Marxism. The evolution of evil. The proposed end of mankind as we know it. And the beginning of the transformation of what it means to be human. All guided by an algorithmic god. A false god made in the image of Rousseau and Marx that will put limits on growth. That is what we have allowed to come into our world and into our churches. A systematic religion that seeks to end mankind, which intends on taking over our governance, corporations, financial systems, education, and our faith. But here's the good thing. We know their game, and we know their plans. But you have to listen, and you must understand. Because the amount of gaslighting that is taking place from all sides will create such a delusionary fog that if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. So you must stand. You must stand with us, and we must stand together with courage to end this pestilence to clear out those that play this deceptive game from the churches, ministries, and seminaries. And that is what this conference series will do for you and for all of your friends. James Lindsay and I will make the who, what, when, where, and how very clear. So as the video series rolls out from the theology of Marxism over the next two weeks, give it a listen and take every word to heart. Because... We must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic.